Okay, let's take a look at uh, the rest of the controls here in part two for sample one. In part one, we covered all of the features up top and briefly went over the envelopes at the bottom and other controls, but now we're going to go a little bit deeper here. Starting from the left, we have a uh, pitch control. So this should be pretty obvious. We can tune that. And I'll just control click to turn that back. Now just below that we have uh, an LFO dial here. Now this is going to basically determine how the pitch is affected by whatever our settings are here in the low LFO section. And currently we're set to sync and we're at half and we're on a square wave. So if I turn this to activate it, our pitch should then be modulated by a half and a square wave. Now if I, we can click to select a different one here. We can also drag the dial. And we can choose these different uh, waveforms. Here's a sign, sawtooth, and we can also choose free and choose by frequency here. That one's very subtle. I'll come back to sync, go to quarter, and so that's the LFO there. Next we have envelope, and then this is going to activate our envelope here. So if we turn to the left, then that's going to take the pitch down. If we turn to the right, then it's going to take the pitch up. And how it does that, how it goes about that throughout the envelope for this sample is going to be determined by these controls here. So if I let's say we take it up the attack is set for an immediate as soon as I press a key it's going to start to go up higher and we'll adjust these as we go along to just listen and see how this works okay so if I raise the attack then we should get our initial pitch without this adjustment we've made in the envelope to raise it up and then it will gradually go up as we raise the attack time. And we should be able to actually come back to the original if we lower the sustain and the release is already down. Let's shorten up that attack time to make that go qu even quicker. Now if we were to raise the sustain and release, then it's pretty much going to not go back down in pitch. Okay, and those are the pitch controls. I'm going to just control click to take all of these back to as they were. Next we have a filter section here and first we'll start with the cutoff frequency and right now we're pretty much letting all of the frequencies through. And before we make adjustments to the cutoff know that the type is going to directly affect this cutoff dial. So we're right now on a low pass with a 24 dB slope. We can choose between band pass, a couple different ones, high pass. So uh, the low pass is basically allowing the lower frequencies through. And as we lower the cutoff, we're take, stripping away the higher frequencies and going to the lower. If we were to choose band pass, this is 
if you were to imagine a dam with say a foot inch slice taken out of the center of it and water is just going through that center slice this is kind of what a band pass is we're letting a certain band or range of frequencies through and the slope is actually 12 db 24 db is going to kind of control the the opening the range of it how wide it is if we were to then adjust the cutoff on a bandpass, we'd then sweep, we'd kind of move that cutout in that dam along different areas of the river that it's blocking and let out, uh, say, more at the bottom or the left or more on the right. So I don't know. I hope that's a good explanation. Um, the high pass, we are letting higher frequencies through, and when we move the cutoff dial down, we're taking out the lower ones. And so we've got a variety of options that we can choose here. I'm going to keep it on the low pass 24 dB slope. And let's just take a look at the cutoff here first. So since we're in low pass, the low frequencies are prioritized and then as we come down we're cutting the highs out. Now the resonance here, this is almost like a gain for whatever frequency we're at on the cutoff here. So just as a random example, we can't, there's no readout for what frequency we're working with here. Just say, for example, we're at 500 hertz and we're cutting everything above 500 hertz. If I were to turn up the resonance, then it's going to boost around 500 hertz and uh, almost like an equalizer. So if I then play back, and then it's going to turn this almost into like a filter sweep. I'll raise that resonance up a bit even more. Okay, and that's what those are for. Next we have the velocity dial and this is basically going to affect what the frequencies are doing based on how hard we trigger the sample. So if I turn it to the left, we're not going to have much of an effect. If I come to the right, As I press the key softly, we're cutting those high frequencies out. And then as I press harder on the key, it's going to open back up and allow the higher frequencies. So I'm going to start off triggering lightly on my keyboard. And then as I press harder, it opens up those higher frequencies. So I'll control click. The wheel, this is going to basically determine how our modulation wheel on our MIDI controller affects the frequencies, and unfortunately I don't have a modulation wheel that I can use to uh, show this as an example, but just know uh, that that is what that is for. Next we've got the LFO, and we've already just taken a look at that within the pitch section. I'll briefly just... Uh, do a sample here. So this time, instead of pitch, we're altering the filter. I'll come to the right. Let's try a square wave. Let's raise that up. Okay, I'll put that back as it was, control clicking. Now we come to the envelope. And the envelope is going to activate the envelope here, the ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release. If we turn to the left, then this is going to cut the frequencies. It's going to be determined by the type that we have selected. So since we're on a low pass, we're going to be cutting even more frequencies and the envelope here is going to determine when and 
when they're cut and how long they're held and when they're released. So since we're already on low pass, we're probably not going to hear anything at all, I don't think. Well, it's pretty. So, but as soon as we raise it up to allow more frequencies, we immediately hear it. If we were to raise the attack, we can hear that initial clean sample without the filtering effect. So as we raise that attack up, the original sample is coming through without any filter effect. Then this envelope is taking over and applying this uh, dial in how we have chosen to have our frequencies lowered. Okay, if I raise this up, I would need to turn this cutoff down because what we're doing when we turn to the right is we're introducing higher frequencies. So if we cut off the frequencies of the sample initially, then once our envelope takes over where we've told it we want to introduce higher frequencies, set the attack to be a bit delayed. As time goes by, we're going to introduce the higher frequencies that we've chosen in this envelope dial. I'm going to raise that cut off a bit more so we can hear it in the beginning. So again, we can make that come in quicker. We can adjust the sustain and release here. Since our decay and sustain is turned down so low, we're not even getting these highs introduced. But if we were to raise these up, you see how it comes in briefly and then comes back to what we set in the cutoff section here. So if I take it down even further, it should be a more dramatic or pronounced difference. Okay, I'll control click and uh, put all of these back. Just keep in mind that if you're going to work with this envelope, the type here is going to have an effect on what this does. Now, we, next we have amp. So the gain is obvious. We're just going to raise the volume of our sample. The pan is going to pan our sample left or right. Now, um, what else do I want to look at here? The velocity. This is going to determine how however hard we're pressing the uh, keyboard to play the sample back, it's going to determine how it affects the amplitude. So if I turn it all the way to the left, then I can press softly on my keyboard and the sample is going to trigger actually pretty at a normal level, at a higher velocity. So I'm pressing as light as I can on my key and we're still getting that full audio signal. Now, if I come all the way to the right here, we don't get anything at all when I press just as lightly. Now, if I start pressing harder, okay, and then so the center is just, Let 
and I'll go ahead and put that back. Now again, the wheel is going to determine how our modulation wheel affects the uh, amp here. Turning left or right is going to uh, adjust, you know, the amplitude and how it's affected. The LFO is going to, as we've seen, adjust the volume levels here based on whatever we have selected. Let's just try that out real quick. I'll go ahead and turn that on. <laughs> Let's try a siren wave here. We've got uh, these wheel, the wheel function, which is going to determine your modulation wheel. You've got free. Okay, so I got a little bit interrupted by a mower there, but okay, so the wheel is going to determine um, the amount of the LFO that's affecting the sample, and then the delay is going to determine how long it takes for this LFO to come into the sample once we've started, once we've triggered it. And so with that, I think we'll go ahead and leave off, and I hope that you have gained something useful from this video.